Nobody is talking about the nightmare dancing in front of Elon Musk and SpaceX. We must express thoughts to comprehend how things will operate beneath the super heavy rocket. Even though many SpaceX engineers are professionals and are well versed in their respective departments to face challenging issues, one thing that has sparked our interest is how the super heavy booster can fire up 29 Raptor engines without blowing up. Let's find out in this video. If you have a chance to look at the Super Heavy rocket, you'll be able to witness how massive SpaceX built the structure. It is undoubtedly a stunning sight to behold. The dry mass of the Super Heavy without propellant ranges from 158,000 to 199,500 kilograms. Let's put that in perspective with what we're all used to in real life using an elephant as an illustration because a big elephant weighs 5,443.108 kilograms, the weight of a starship, both super heavy and second stage starship is around 199,500 kilograms. Hence, sending one starship into space is equivalent to transporting 37 big elephants from Earth to space. Consider how cumbersome that would be. That's the weight we're talking about. The super heavy is so massive that it can only be lifted and moved into the air by cranes. Consider this unbelievable scenario. SpaceX and Elon Musk wish to carry this massive vessel to Mars, yet no crane can move it from Earth to Mars. For the Super Heavy to get so far into space, it will need a reliable engine to ensure the rocket's safety without exploding. It must be a strong engine and only the Raptor will be employed to accomplish this feat. Also, anything that goes up must surely come down due to gravitational force. This gigantic Super Heavy with insane mass would battle gravitational force and pierce through the thick atmosphere to transport itself to Mars and maybe other planets. As a result, the force propelling the starship into space must be greater than the force operating in the opposite direction as it travels upward. SpaceX has conducted multiple simulation tests and determined that lifting this massive structure will need the use of 29 to 33 Raptor engines. Another consideration is how SpaceX will deal with the heat created by these 29 Raptor engines once they all fire up. This was a difficult hurdle for SpaceX to overcome, but 29 engines will combust flawlessly as predicted because of regenerative cooling. So what exactly is regenerative cooling? Regenerative cooling is a method of cooling an engine bypassing some or all of the propellant via tubes, channels or a jacket around the combustion chamber or nozzle. But while this technology will be utilized to minimize heat Heat created during combustion, what about the heat generated between two or more engines after a long hour of firing the 29 engines? How can SpaceX keep the heat between nearby engines from melting and exploding? Let's explore an excellent answer to these questions. The orbital launch pad in Boca Chica currently does not have a flame diverter and the launcher is just 20 meters above the ground. As a result, massive amounts of heat and energy are sent straight into the concrete when the engines fire. This has caused issues for SpaceX in the past with large pieces of concrete being blown back up into the engine compartment, ultimately damaging engines. SpaceX coats the concrete with martite, an ablative coating to prevent this. This shields the concrete from damage and prevents it from breaking apart and flying into the engine bay. The orbital launch pad will also be equipped with a massive water deluge system, spraying water right underneath the engines during the launch process. Contrary to popular belief, the water isn't simply there to cool down when it's hot. One of its primary objectives is to limit the sound energy generated by the engines, which may be exceedingly harmful to both the rocket and the launch site. Another issue that SpaceX must consider is the sheer amount of load that the rocket will be under when all 29 engines are powered on at once. The thrust pack located at the bottom of the booster is intended to transfer all of the force generated by the engines to the walls of the booster, which is why it's located at the bottom of the booster. The engine ignition will be staggered to provide a progressive ramp up to maximum performance. This is something that SpaceX has already accomplished with the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, and it's expected to be implemented in the Starship. According to NASA, the Falcon 9's opposing engines are fired in pairs, 150 milliseconds apart, allowing the rocket to achieve peak power in less than half a second. An ignition process identical to that used for Super Heavy would take approximately two seconds to light an engine. Redundancy is one of the primary reasons for having so many engines rather than just a few bigger engines on a single booster. If numerous engines fail during the launch or landing, the rocket will not be destroyed since the other engines will be able to compensate for the loss of thrust by turning on or increasing the throttle. 
Interestingly, this is a principle that Falcon 9 follows as well. For instance, when a Merlin engine failed during Starlink launch last year, the Falcon 9 was able to deliver its cargo into the proper orbit, proving that failure is not inevitable in space. Although this did not impact the booster landing, the engine that failed was unable to slow the vehicle down enough to make it safe on the ground. Because only three engines are capable of performing the landing burn on the Falcon 9, there is nothing that can be done if one of them fails to ignite. However, Super Heavy has many more engines than the Falcon 9, it will have a significantly broader throttle range, allowing it to hover. The more parts you have in engineering, the greater the chance that the entire system may fail. Failure of even one out of 30 engines on a space rocket may be devastating, while the failure of two engines almost guarantees disaster. To put it in another way, the more engines you put on a rocket, the more likely it is to fail. Probability laws begin to act against you. Each engine is immensely complex, with several pipes, valves, and turbo pumps. The engine are subjected to extreme heat and mechanical strain. Failure may take many forms, including the engine gently shut down. However, instead of turbo bomb sustained catastrophic damage, scattering debris, fuel line poured into a combustion chamber on another engine, and so on. All of these despicable actions finally result in a launchpad explosion. No viable design has ever involved such a large number of engines. The Saturn V had five F1 engines, each with four combustion chambers, and they shared a turbo pump and piping system. Ariane 5 had a single engine, whereas Proton had six. The Falcon 9 has nine Merlin engines, which are more straightforward than the Raptor. The Soviet N1 rocket constructed for a moon program was the only rocket that attempted to employ 30 engines because the USSR lacked an engine capable of competing with the American F-1 in terms of thrust and economy, N-1 was equipped with 30 smaller NK-33 engines. The drawbacks of such a design were well known to Russian engineers, so they devised a sophisticated CORD system, which stands for Coordination of Engine Operation to Coordinate Work. On the first three rockets, CORD used an analog computer, and on the fourth, a digital computer. The control system could theoretically shut down one or two malfunctioning engines, while still allowing the rocket to use the remaining 28 to push a mission to the moon, as with the 29 Raptor engine in use. One engine failing or exploding might damage the other engines to cause a launch failure. SpaceX has employed 27 Merlin engines on Falcon Heavy launches, but each Merlin engine is protected from the others by blast barriers. On Super Heavy 4, there is no blast wall between the Raptors, but SpaceX must be satisfied that any failed engines can be shut down before exploding. According to SpaceX, following several fit checks, hardware testing, and static test burns of the Super Heavy Booster's 29 Raptors, engines, this full stack will fly into orbit to test the Super Heavy's lift capability and Starship's re-entry capabilities. The first orbital flight of the Starship was inspired by the Saturn V rocket's maiden test flight. Engineers chose to send all three rocket stages into orbit rather than just a piece of it. This concept was a fantastic approach to ensure that all the systems were working correctly together, a procedure known as an integrated test. The Starship is a physics-driven perspective on rocketry. It has a mission to accomplish, with no involvement from vote-seeking senators, a luxury that only a private corporation can afford, as long as it's sponsored by a motivated billionaire. This year promises to be amazing, as Starship prototype manufacturing ramps up and new milestones are achieved every week. SpaceX isn't hesitant to sacrifice a prototype to collect valuable data, and you can bet that things will be pushed to their limits. What type of cooling system is used in assembling the Super Heavy's 29 Raptor engines? You can also check why SpaceX Super Heavy Booster is the biggest monster so far. It's amazing! 